I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We're going to return to our histories briefly in 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. First, we flip to 2 Kings, chapter 24. We will be reading verses 1 through 7. So first, chapter heading. Jerusalem besieged and taken by Nebuchadnezzar. Many of Judah carried captive into Babylon. Zedekiah becomes king in Jerusalem. He rebels against Babylon. So remember, Jehoiakim is now king in Judah. He's, his brother Jehoahaz was deposed by Egypt, and Jehoiakim is installed on the throne. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him, and the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did and also for the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates all that pertained to the king of Egypt. Now remember, Egypt had defeated Assyria and taken much of the land between the Nile and the Euphrates. That was the war that killed Josiah and eventually deposed Jehoahaz and installed Jehoiakim. But now Babylon has conquered all the land there. From the Nile to the Euphrates, Babylon now controls it. And Egypt is pushed back on the other side of the Nile. But it's not actually the Nile. It says the river of Egypt. I can't remember what the river is now, but there's another river. The Nile comes up like that, and then there's another river that comes off going kind of a southeastern direction. And that's what they mean by the river of Egypt, because that was the traditional border, the ancient border of Egypt was this other river, but I can't remember the name of it now. Let me see. Having looked it up in the gazette here, apparently it was named the river of Egypt, possibly also the river Bezor, but anyways, that's where the land went. It was actually the southern border of Israel. But let us now turn to Second Chronicles, chapter 36, and this will be verses 6 through 8. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his stead. This basically skips over the full 11 years of Jehoiakim's reign because it says they came to bind him in fetters and take him to Jerusalem, and take him to Babylon. But Jehoiakim dies in Judah. It's actually at the end of his reign that Nebuchadnezzar is coming to do this. And he dies while the army is marching towards Judea. And when the army of Nebuchadnezzar gets there, Jehoiakim is now king. So we will read about that a little bit more in our next reading in the histories. But this is the reign of Jehoiakim. We will read, well, we got a little other stuff to get to before we get back to that, but we'll see you there.